Since government announced mandatory vaccination, suddenly there seems to be a growing anti-vaccination narrative. It's almost as if the vaccine hesitancy we thought had vanished, has suddenly re-emerged. Yeah. Um, did we misread the situation? Yeah, okay. Good morning, Jeffa, and good morning to um, your viewers out there. So, um, first, I think one of the things that um, worry us uh, as scientists is, uh, is the, the attempt to use this um, uh, vaccine mandate or attempts at imposing vaccine mandate to then uh, use it as a platform for anti-vaccine rhetoric. And I think that's very dangerous. We need to separate the two issues. If you are making a legal case about whether this is actually proper or not, let's, let's stay there. Let's, let's make a legal case. But to then move ahead and start to question the science around the vaccines and, and ask questions about whether the vaccine actually works and you know, whether it's even necessary. I think that's really dangerous because we've, like you said, I thought we had moved past that stage. Um, all the credible data from across the world shows that um, the vaccine saves lives, it reduces the disease severity, it, it reduces hospitalization, reduces even um, the, the uh, percentage of symptomatic infections. And in some cases, some of the vaccines actually reduce transmission. Not all of them, but uh, there are some of them that reduce transmission. So there's clearly a positive uh, impact from these vaccines. So if we are going to make an argument about the legalities of it, let's, let's keep it there. Let's not try to worsen our already uh, bad vaccine hesitancy by raising questions about the vaccine itself. Mm. But the, Dr. Wandare, yes. many will ask these questions partly because today I was listening to international news coming in. And in spite of the high vaccination levels in places like the UK, France, Germany, the US, now people are being told you need to take a booster shot. Yeah. The infections are rising. So it will then beg the question as to whether really the vaccine are actually doing what it's supposed to do, and then you will have others question the science. Yeah. So, uh, yes, that's, that's a, a legitimate uh, uh, question to ask. But let's, let's bear in mind that um, vaccines are different, and vaccines for different diseases uh, have different... Uh, features and, and characteristics. So there are vaccines that you take one shot and you are good for life, okay? There are other vaccines that you need to take every 10 years. Still, there are others that you have to take every year, like flu vaccines, <laughs> you understand? So it depends on the disease and the dynamics of um, the immune response that is generated with the vaccine. So we cannot say that because uh, people take the vaccine and after six months, they need a booster. That means the vaccine is not working. The reason why in many of the countries that have high vaccine coverage, they're still getting cases is because of the time lag. So um, countries like Israel, they were first off the block to vaccinate everybody. What that means is that by the time we started getting Delta and others, most of the population had uh, been vaccinated more than eight months ago. And if you look at the, the, um, the, the curve of how the antibodies um, last, normally after six months, they start to decline very rapidly. So what it means is that if a country has fully vaccinated its population, and then eight months later, there's a new variant, of course, it will affect the people as if, uh, you know, the vaccination rate wasn't high. You understand? So it's, it's not the case that the vaccine is not working, is that we are still trying to understand the disease and the dynamics. But we know for sure that if you take the vaccine, if you are fully vaccinated, within the first six months, you are very well protected compared to people who are not vaccinated. There's no question about that anywhere. It is beyond that, that you start to see a drop off in the protection. And that's why they need boosters. You understand? And then let me just make the point about uh, people saying that in Africa or in Ghana, the cases are just 100,000 or, or, or whatever. You, you rightly mentioned, we're not doing sufficient testing and people are not reporting. It is true that um, in sub-Saharan Africa, it seems that 
the disease is not as severe as elsewhere. So it means that people are not um, uh, getting severely sick. So most of them don't report and get tested. We have a study which um, we've, uh, uh, that we are doing, which we'll share very soon, which shows that across Ghana, after the third wave, nearly 50% of the people had been exposed. So we looked at antibodies in people across the country, in public places, you know, nearly 50%, so 47.5%. So, so they'd been exposed to COVID-19? Yes. Did they have it? Were they asymptomatic? Exactly. So if you ask them, the vast majority of them never got tested because they didn't, um, they didn't feel sick enough to, to get tested. So they didn't even know that they had COVID. You know, a few of them, you ask, they would say that, oh, they remember not feeling well, but you know, just for a day or two. And they didn't bother. They didn't, they didn't go to get tested. You know? But the majority of them um, you know, didn't, they didn't even get tested. So that means that the testing web is not capturing about 80% of the people who are infected. So if we assume that just because people are not showing up to get tested, um, that there's no uh, COVID here, it, it's, it's not correct. It's, it's misleading. Mm. And by the way, there may not be severe symptoms right now, but we don't know the long-term effects of harboring the virus. So if people are getting uh, COVID-19 and they're having mild symptoms and they're not showing up to hospital, we shouldn't say that, okay, it's well and good. Any infection cannot be well and good. You don't know what damage it leaves behind after it goes. Maybe five years from now, you'd go to the hospital with another condition and they'll say, you know, it was COVID it that was left. It was traced back. To yes. It can be traced be back. Yes, because okay. this vaccine, uh, this uh, virus, you know that it does damage to our organs. Well, because once it gets into uh, your bloodstream, it induces such an inflammatory response that it, uh, you can have damage to several organs that you may not know. And so young people think that they are robust because they don't show symptoms, but you don't know what's going to happen years down the line. Okay. So we cannot just assume that because we are not testing everybody, uh, then uh, uh, and only people, testing is mainly voluntary. People, either people who show up in the, in the hospital and they are sick, or people who are traveling. That's how we get our test data. If you look at the countries which are reporting high numbers like the UK, people are testing themselves every day. They are required to test themselves every day and report it. So people are at home and they are testing and reporting. So that's why the numbers are up. If we're, can you imagine if we're doing that here? You, you see the numbers you, you'll be reporting? So let's not uh, compare apples and oranges.